Hi, everybody. Welcome to the next uh, session of this third day of JuliaCon. Uh, so we're going to start with Structured Optimization by Nicolo Antonello and Lorenzo Stella. So uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. So uh, I'm going to present uh, this new package called Structured Optimization. It was done uh, in collaboration with Lorenzo Stella, who unfortunately couldn't join JuliaCon. And supervised by Panos Patrinos and Tom Van Bartekstok. So we start uh, with a brief introduction, showing uh, you some uh, examples of where you can uh, apply this package, and also the syntax that it uses. Uh, then I will uh, go briefly through the proximal grid method, which is the main solver that we currently have in the package, and also some of its accelerated variants that are uh, available in the software. Uh, then I will talk about the package structure. Uh, because actually it consists of multiple packages. And finally, I will show you some demos, and uh, here you, you, you will be able to see some of the features that the package offers. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, yeah, I will also give a roadmap of the things that are missing and we would like to do. So okay, I guess I don't need to convince you that uh, numerical optimization has broad applications on signal processing, optimal control, data science, machine learning, and much more. But just to give uh, uh, a brief introduction on uh, the, the basic notation that I use, I guess you're all familiar with it. But this is the simplest optimization problem that we can write. So you have a cost function, uh, P, that, ba that basically maps some optimization variable that uh, could be, for example, uh, an n-dimensional uh, vector in with real variables, but they could be complex as well. And uh, the cost function maps uh, these variables to a cost, which you would like to minimize. And once you minimize this, you get your optimal solution, which uh, is what you're looking for. Or solutions. So, or solutions, yeah, in case uh, you have <laughs> multiple uh, minimums. Uh, so in general, uh, what, you, uh, what this uh, cost function consists of is a set uh, of uh, different terms, which are loss functions that could be a regularization function as well. And oftentimes, they are um, uh, combined uh, with uh, some mappings that basically <coughs> takes your uh, input uh, variables into another uh, space, Rm, for example. Uh, in this form, well, we actually also can include some constraints. Uh, what we do here is that we translate a constraint, so let's say that x must belong to a set. Or well, you can use this uh, indicator function, so uh, basically if x belongs to the set, uh, th this function is going to be zero, and if it's not, it's going to uh, plus infinity. So what are the challenges of this uh, type of problems? Well, uh, the first challenge is that you can have really large scale problems, so n can be extremely large, so the the optimization uh, algorithm can be unfeasible uh, computationally wise. Another big uh, issue that you might encounter is that you might have some of these terms that are non-smooth, so non-differentiable. For example, the indicator function is a, a really good example of this because you have quite, uh, they're quite non-differentiable. And uh, finally, of course, non-convexity, which uh, leads to uh, local minimum and suboptimal solutions. So that's another uh, challenge that we have. So just to give uh, uh, a brief overview, uh, it's very limited here, so I'm missing a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, mixed integer programming here is not uh, treated at, at all. But uh, these are the kind of algorithms that are out there for this kind of problem. So the gradient methods, or Newton methods, as you like, well, they are the most uh, famous and robust one that have been there uh, for many, many years. Uh, they actually have, uh, they're capable of uh, dealing with large scale problems, for example, with uh, quasi-Newton methods, uh, with limited uh, memory as well. Uh, and of course, there is also, we could include in this uh, thing also the stochastic gradient descent, for example. And the Julia community already uh, provided uh, some packages like Optin, I think also Jump uh, can deal with these problems. And in general, uh, of course, I'm not citing <laughs> all the packages that are 
out there because there are many. So <coughs> forgive me if I, uh, I didn't put your package here. Uh, but the problem with gradient methods is because they're uh, dealing with gradients. Well, if you have no smooth uh, cost, uh, cost function, well, uh, you, you cannot use these methods in general. Uh, so another uh, type of algorithm is uh, interior point methods. This can indeed uh, deal with non-smooth cost functions. And uh, however, they are not so well suited for really big problems. Uh, they're very <laughs> robust because, for example, uh, what you typically do is that you tra transform your problem into, for example, cone programming, and you end up uh, using slack variables, which uh, enlarge your problem even further. So sometimes the, this type of uh, solvers, they're not uh, uh, so suited for really big problems. And uh, of course also this uh, uh, has been treated by the Julia community with convex.jl, uh, jump as well. Um, and finally a new uh, uh, set of optimization mm -hmm. algorithm that is renew interest is the splitting method. Uh, the main reason for this is that because they can uh, deal with uh, no smooth uh, cost functions. And uh, of course, the typically other first order methods, so uh, they're, they're very suited for large scale problem. Among these, uh, well, there are uh, really many and they're uh, popping out, out a lot of new methods these days in uh, uh, research. Uh, well, we have the proximal gradient method, ADMM, Douglas, Rochefort, uh, splitting, uh, many others. So uh, what the package that we're going to present, structure optimization, is actually dealing with this uh, last set of algorithms, uh, and in particular with the proximal gradient methods. Uh, if you want to have a, a review of this uh, type of algorithm, I suggest this paper here. So uh, let's get our hands a little bit dirty and, and see some problems where uh, this no smoothness appears. So for example, we have uh, a linear time invariant system. This, I come from a, a DSP background, so uh, this is what I typically work with. Uh, so a linear time, in time invariant system can model a lot of things like a mechanical system, uh, room acoustics, etc. So you have an impulse response which uh, models your, your system. And uh, it's actually a black box model, more or less. So you have an input, X, which could be uh, this signal here, and you get your output uh, y and typically this is done through uh, convolution. Uh, so here, uh, for example, y uh, is connected with uh, is mapped uh, to a, but a here doesn't really represent a matrix. It's uh, uh, it's not a matrix multiplication, but it's actually the application of a mapping to x. And in particular, here we have convolution, which is uh, denoted with uh, this uh, uh, symbol here. So in general, you plug in your signal and you get your uh, output y, but uh, there are many uh, problems, uh, in particular the convolution, where uh, you would like to do to go to the opposite way. So you have uh, some uh, noisy signal y tilde, and you would like to reconstruct your input. Uh, so how can we do this? Well, we pose an optimization problem. So for example, uh, we have the Lisper uh, term. So we try to minimize the distance between our uh, model and x now is the optimization variable. And we want to fit it uh, to our measurement y tilde in the least square term. Do you know what a is? Uh, yes, you know. Per you know the impulse response, so you, you know perfectly a, of course. Of course, there are uh, other problems where a, you, you don't know it. But here, we assume we know it. So, so a is linear? Yeah, it's linear in this case. So it is. Uh, you could, it could be a matrix, but there are algorithms. I'm going to explain that in a moment. So. Uh, because convolution, there are fast algorithms for that, so uh, in general. Uh, so if you solve this problem, so it consists only of one term, which is smooth and differentiable, actually you have analytical solution. So uh, if you solve this, uh, you get this type of solution. So you see that uh, uh, you have some oscillation, and this is due to uh, uh, ill poseness of the problem, and uh, you have non stability. Uh, so you need to, to kind of uh, get a well-posed problem, and you can do this, for example, by, uh, we've seen that uh, our 
ground truth signal was only positive, so we could include this information inside our uh, optimization problem and limit our solution to be only positive. And this is called non-negative deconvolution. As you can see, you get a better solution because you don't have this fluctuation anymore. And uh, also, this uh, is an example of how a constraint uh, can be uh, uh, turned into an uh, indicator function, so you could uh, actually plug it in in the cost function here. Uh, another uh, technique that uh, uh, you can use is the, what is called least absolute uh, shrinkage and selection operator, in short, lasso. So what you uh, add here is a regularization term, uh, which uh, actually promotes sparsity. Since you, you've seen that the signal was uh, uh, mainly zero, you can actually look for a solution that has uh, a lot of zeros. So uh, this is what uh, the, this term does. It's actually no smooth, so it's in general more problematic to, uh, to minimize. And you can see that if you uh, uh, if you set a good lambda, you can get really nice reconstruction of your input signal. Uh, okay, so let's have a look also at the modeling language that uh, uh, structure optimization offers. Well, it's uh, uh, relatively uh, simple. So, uh, for example, these are iterative algorithms, so you typically need to start uh, from an initial point. And uh, let's say that you start from zero. Well, in structure optimization, you just define your object variable and you set a dimension n. And uh, by default, this will create an, uh, an optimization variable that is set to, to zero. And here we have the, the optimization, the lasso problem that I showed you before. So you have a term that is a, a fitting term to the measurement y tilde plus the regularization thing. And I hope you can see so uh, on uh, uh, structure optimization is just write a macro at minimize, then ls, which is a shorthand notation for 0 0.5, uh, the square norm. So ls stands for least squares. And then you have a, a convolution here. So you just write convolution between x, which is your optimization variable, and h, which is given, minus uh, y tilde. Uh, after that, the second term, again, is really uh, almost a one-to-one -one correspondence with the map. Uh, so plus lambda multiplied by norm of one. Uh, once you type this uh, on your Julia code, of course you shouldn't go, uh, you shouldn't do a new line. This is just for uh, space uh, because, you know, Julia can be uh, <laughs> sensitive to that, uh, especially with macros. So once you type this, uh, you, uh, your solver starts. It analyzes the problem automatically and it applies an algorithm. It solves your problem. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So uh, once you, uh, uh, you minimize, you get your optimal solution. How can you access to it? You just write tilde x and uh, you have your solution. For the, uh, the other problem that I've shown you, so uh, no negative deconvolution, well, again, you have simply a constraint now and you just write subject to instead of the plus norm, x greater than uh, zero. And uh, this automatically uh, converts this constraint to an indicator function, and then it does uh, the very same thing. So, uh, and moreover, if you want to initialize your problem, let's say with a random uh, variable, well, you just plug in uh, uh, a vector uh, inside your variable and disconstruct a variable. Uh, so how do we actually solve this problem? Well, we, as I said, we use the proximal gradient method. Uh, so in general, we have this uh, summation of cost function and proximal gradient method. Uh, they are also know as uh, forward backward splitting. Uh, works like this. So you try to uh, uh, split your cost function into a smooth, so a differential term f, and a non-smooth part uh, g, which may also include the constraints. Uh, so uh, it's a rather easy algorithm. So uh, what you do is that you start from, uh, it's an iterative procedure, so you start from x of zero. You apply a gradient uh, step descent. So here uh, you have uh, a step size gamma and uh, a gradient. So you go uh, to one point, x bar. Uh, so you try to minimize f, the smooth part in this case, but you also want to minimize for g. So 
uh, what we use uh, in proximal gradient method is our proximal mapping, which I'm going to show you uh, very soon. And basically, this uh, uh, other step uh, brings uh, x bar uh, closer to the minimum of g, but it tries also to be uh, close enough uh, also to x bar. So this is what more or less proximal uh, mapping does. And by uh, iterating this thing, so of course you can basically uh, put uh, this equation inside here, so you can write uh, the proximal uh, gradient method in one line. You can see that you have a trend towards the minimum of f plus g. So what is uh, proximal mapping? Uh, well, uh, uh, it's, a, it's actually another optimization problem. And uh, what it does is that uh, you, you balance between the minimization of g and uh, the minimization of uh, this uh, uh, square term, this uh, quadratic term, sorry. Uh, so, and again, with a step size uh, gamma that balances the two minimization. Uh, in general, it's a really uh, efficient optimization problem, so that's why uh, it has often closed form. And uh, it has a lot of properties here. I'm really going to uh, the basic uh, idea only. Uh, so, for example, if you have the L1 norm, this is equivalent of doing a soft resolving, which is a really uh, simple operation. And uh, uh, if instead, instead you're dealing with a set, this proximal uh, operator is a generalization of, uh, 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 of a projection into that set. So, uh, uh, of course, there is much more about proximal mappings. And another uh, oracle, so this was one of the oracles, if you want, that we need to construct uh, proximal gradient method. <laughs> the other one is, of course, the gradient, because we use uh, uh, gradient descent uh, 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 computation. So, for example, for the least square, well, you know, you just apply the, uh, uh, the chain rule, and you can see that uh, this consists of a of x minus y, which is the residual, and uh, this is uh, uh, what is the adjoint, which is basically uh, it would be the transpose in the case of a matrix. And the nice thing about this is that you can uh, actually uh, compute this A and uh, A adjoint. The, it's adjoint with the uh, fast operations. So uh, for example, if in the case that I've shown you before where you, uh, your A was consisting of convolution, uh, you can use FFT instead of building, uh, typically it would be a topless matrix, so uh, a matrix that is uh, uh, rather big to store, et cetera. So, you use this type of algorithms to compute this. And of course, you, uh, you can actually uh, have more complex uh, stuff. For example, a combination of multiple, uh, uh, multiple operators. And this ends up in being a, a automatic differentiation or back, back propagation. So I'm not going to explain this, but I'm just uh, saying that the, this is basically the application of the chain rule and a, a nice technique to jointly uh, evaluate in the, the cost function f and the gradient. So uh, proximal gradient method, we, we've seen that uh, uh, it has cheap iteration, uh, and this comes at the cost because uh, basically you have uh, slow conversions and uh, low accuracy in general. The nice feature about this uh, algorithm is that uh, it can also deal with non-convex problems, so you're guaranteed to at least uh, reach a local uh, minimum. So there have been many uh, uh, variants of this method. For example, the uh, fast proximal gradient method, which uh, reaches better accuracy by using natural acceleration, uh, although uh, convergence is not guaranteed for the non-convex case. And more lately, uh, Lorenzo and uh, uh, his research group, uh, they work on these algorithms, uh, proximal uh, average Newton type from optimally conditioned uh, PANOC which has more extent, uh, expensive iteration, but it really reaches uh, better accuracy using limited memory uh, quasi Newton methods. Uh, and it can deal with the uh, uh, non-convex problem. So uh, here you can find the paper where this algorithm was proposed. Uh, and so uh, the package structure. So we're actually dealing with uh, uh, three uh, packages. Well, initially it was a, a single one, uh, but then uh, Lorenzo really pushed to uh, move things uh, the most independently as possible. Currently, we have really few dependencies among these three packages. So the first one is uh, proximal operator. It's basically a set of uh, 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 very commonly used cost function, and it basically gives you uh, what's the oracles that you need, so the proximal operator and the gradient. And you can combine this with uh, many uh, calculus rules. 
Then we have Asterisk Operator, which is another collection of uh, often used uh, uh, mappings, uh, for example, convolution, filters, finite difference, etc. Uh, but also nonlinear mappings. Uh, and uh, again, here the philosophy is that you use uh, fast uh, algorithms to compute this, uh, these methods, and you can also combine them using calculus rules. Uh, and finally, we have a proximal algorithm where the solvers are written. Uh, here we have uh, the three that I just uh, talked about, but there are also more than that. So uh, we're planning to. Uh, to use them sooner or later. In, uh, and structure optimization basically is uh, the final thing that uh, glues all this stuff all together, offering the, the uh, modeling language that I've shown you before. So some demos and features. Uh, well, the first one is line spectral estimation. Uh, so you have a signal Y, uh, but it's just a chunk of a signal. And uh, you know that it consists only of 14 sinusoids. And you want to estimate uh, the, the frequencies uh, and the amplitudes of this sinusoid. Uh, so what can you do? Well, the, the easiest thing that you can do is you, you simply take the FFT. Uh, remember that uh, a discrete Fourier transform, so you use an FFT uh, for this case. And uh, this actually goes from uh, real space to complex space. But you see that uh, if you look at the curve here, well, uh, it has a really low resolution, so uh, the frequencies that you have here, they're kind of merged, so it doesn't really uh, work well. Well, we can do better than that. You can take a zero padded FFT. So what you do is just uh, increase the resolution uh, by adding a uh, lot of zeros after your data uh, signal Y. Now, of course, here uh, the, the, the FFT becomes bigger and you have a super resolution factor. It gets better results here, but still some of the frequency are ma merged due to spectral leakage. So what can we do instead? We could use, again, a lasso problem and uh, X now is going to be the, the variables, which, is, which are complex. And basically what you do, uh, this uh, you would like to find a sparse pres representation of this X, which because basically it indicates sinusoid in your signal. And at you, then you, what you do with this uh, here, so you try to convert X back to uh, a time domain <laughs> signal, but this uh, is F is actually the zero padded version. So what you do is that uh, you, you basically do what is the adjoint or of the uh, zero padding. So you just select the first uh, n samples in order for uh, this thing to match uh, your data. And of course, you add a regularization term. So in uh, a structure optimization, again, you can uh, uh, define your variable, which your is going to be complex with dimension like that. And you can also see the syntax here. So you just uh, write uh, inverse FFT of X, and then you can select only the first N samples. Uh, and this automatically creates some uh, 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 operators that are uh, matrix-free. Uh, so for example, the Fourier transform and then uh, simply a selection of uh, the, the output of that. And again, you have, uh, uh, so you can see that you get better results. Uh, so uh, some of the frequency are really matching, but still uh, you have a lot of uh, small uh, components here and there. And this is because uh, this problem is actually a convex uh, uh, relaxation of a more uh, difficult one, uh, which is this one, uh, which basically you limit uh, uh, x sub zero to, uh, this is the L zero norm, so it basically counts how many non-zero elements uh, in your optimization variables are there. And uh, theoretically with this you can get a perfect reconstruction, at least this was introduced in the uh, compressed sensing uh, community. And uh, if you minimize, uh, with structure optimization, you can also uh, use this <laughs> non type of non-convex uh, uh, constraints, as you can see. And you, you definitely get almost per perfect uh, reconstruction. But of course, you need to be uh, really careful with initialization. And uh, another nice thing is of uh, this is that uh, actually, uh, we s if we put the previous code lines that I show you, well, this actually uh, will already be initialized uh, to the previous solution, which is the lasso solution, which gives this uh, nice result. Uh, because if you start from zero, you, you might not end up in a bad local minima and you have some frequencies that are uh, really bad. That's the point. Yeah. 
so another uh, thing, example that I'm going to show you is video background separation. So you have a video uh, with some screen, and you would like to uh, uh, separate the uh, the static uh, background uh, from the moving foreground. So uh, 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 what uh, you 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 can do uh, again, uh, you you can assume that uh, this uh, well you you can put is your data, so you just put your frames into uh, a matrix, having a, each of its row a, a video frame, or so one of these frames. And then uh, you want to decompose this matrix into a low rank, so uh, with having basically all of its columns to be basically linear dependent. And uh, uh, then you have these moving objects in the front, so you would like to have, uh, of course, this will occupy only part of your uh, <coughs> of your image here, so you want to have a sparse, uh, uh, a sparse representation of the, the matrix. So basically you minimize the distance between uh, your data and this two uh, optimization variable, and you uh, to put uh, some sparsity into S and some uh, uh, low rank constraint uh, on, uh, on L. And again, this is solvable uh, using a structure optimization. This is a really large problem because you have a lot of optimization variables. Uh, and you can define the, these uh, 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 variables to be of any shape. So they could be even tensors or uh, whatever you. Uh, and the nice thing is also that you can have different variables. Structure optimization will uh, recognize that you have different variables. It will stack them together. We recognize which terms uh, belongs to which, and it will uh, uh, solve it uh, for you. And this is the result, so as you can see, you have the uh, foreground, which is sparse, and then you have uh, the static background. Okay, so uh, a conclusion and future work. Uh, well, a as you can see, structure optimization uh, offers a, a modeling language with a mathematical notation. It can tackle a really large scale problem, and uh, of course, I couldn't go through all of the features that we have, so check, please, uh, the uh, repository here. There are also other demos uh, with audio uh, signal processing and uh, also some machine learning. So future work, well, uh, uh, of course, at the moment, we cannot solve all of the problem that we have there because we're constrained only to use proximal algorithm methods. And uh, we have kind of a, 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 I'm not going to the details of the, the, uh, the type of problem that you can solve because it's rather technical, if, but I have a slide on that if you want to add. Uh, but it's well explained in the documentation. But we're planning to uh, extend this to a larger pool of problems and uh, by adding new solvers that can tackle uh, more uh, general uh, problems. And of course, we need also to uh, still update to Julia 0 0.7. I kept uh, the 0 0.7 here because uh, I felt a little bit bad for this uh, version. So, <laughs> But yeah, I should say uh, 1.0, I guess. And. Uh, that's it, uh, thanks. I also would like to thank uh, uh, our sponsor, the European uh, Research uh, Council and the European Commission that uh, took me here. And uh, uh, also I would like to thank again uh, Lorenzo, which uh, uh, really uh, helped a lot in this project and he also like, uh, he's the mastermind of the project. So yeah, thank you. Thanks for a very nice talk. Just one question. Uh, how would you set the initial condition for the optimization variable? Uh, basically, it's, uh, it was at the really beginning. Uh, so I have to go back a lot. Uh, you just, uh, yeah, there it is. You either define your variable like that, and this contains, is basically an object that just contains uh, a vector, uh, an array of floats, or it could also be uh, some, something else, I guess, but uh, we have to see that uh, if that works yet. And basically to access it, you just write this tilde x. So eventually you can write tilde x uh, dot equal to something, so to the vector that you want, but still uh, you can also uh, uh, put uh, whatever uh, variable inside, so a random vector, and this will create a, automatically your variable. 
Is that, uh, does that uh, sound? You can't put something else. It doesn't have to be a random nation state. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so yeah, as you can see here, yeah, as you can see here, it, a random variable is just an example. So you could put the uh, one and then only zeros or whatever you want. Yeah. OK, uh, I saw in one of the slides that uh, you use this also for model predictive control. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, do you, is linear yeah. or mo nonlinear model predictive control? Well, uh, uh, Lorenzo worked on uh, optimal control and model predictive control. So, uh, of course, uh, the main uh, step there would be to add, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, a, a parser to differential equation with abstract operator. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that, that's possible. Uh, it's, it's definitely for. No, no, but I saw in one of your papers that you mentioned there was mentioned not only the model predictive. Model predictive control in one of your slides. Yeah, it was uh, where the algorithm was yeah, okay. Uh, okay, okay. proposed. It was a conference on a model predictive control, I guess. But this is not yet implemented in your package. Uh, no, no, it's mainly. Uh, but y if you write your models, uh, and then you, you you can actually plug in in abstract operator. Uh, you just need to to add an, an A that does uh, your model. Basically, and then. But, the but this is, of course, the hard part because you have to dif simulate a nonlinear differential equation. Yes. And I'm not so sure how you bring this method in this in your. Well, basically, uh, what abstract operator does is simply overrides a mol b dot uh, exclamation mark and then a c mol exclamation mark. So they're linear operators, right? And you can you could plug there. And it, well, now I should say mol exclamation mark, right? Because one point zero is like that. But basically, you can, you could plug in uh, also your model, I guess. So. I think we should move on. So uh, let's yeah. thank the speaker again. Thank you.